Today we're going to talk about methods for lifting latent prints. So remember that latent prints are prints that are not visible to the naked eye and we have to develop them in some way. Well the way that we choose to develop them depends upon the surface that they're on. So there's two kind of surfaces, there's porous and non-porous. Porous being surfaces that are kind of holy, think like a sponge is very porous, it's got lots of holes in it. Uh, paper is porous, and then non-porous um, surfaces such as uh, glass, plastic, metal, things like that, very rigid surfaces. Um, so depending on what surface the print is found on will depend on what type of method is best chosen for it. So there's five lifting methods that we're going to discuss in class. The first one is dusting. Dusting for prints. Um, dusting works best on rigid, non-porous um, surfaces. So you want to make sure that you include that in your notes, that it's rigid, non-porous surfaces. Okay, such as glass, plastic, or metal. Um, and the theory behind it is that the dust, the uh, black or white powder, depending on what kind you use, will adhere to the sweat and oils that are left behind on the surface, and the um, the dust will adhere in the exact ridge patterns of your fingerprints. Okay. Um, so here's kind of the method of how to do it. This is the quick version. There's additional videos um, in this week's lesson that will show you specifically how to do this. Uh, but you cover the surface with dust. You remove any of the excess dust or powder, and then you use tape to lift that print off of whatever object it is, and you put it on a print card. And you can use, you use a contrasting, you want to use contrasting um, dust colors. So like if the surface is black, you want to use a white powder. If the surface is a light color, you want to use black powder. Um, because the more contrasting the color, the easier it will be for you to see the print and then to properly lift it. The second method is what we call super glue fuming or cyanoacrylate, which is the scientific name for super glue. It's oftentimes called super glue fuming. It works very well on non-porous surfaces. Again, those hard surfaces, metals, glass, adhesive tape, plastic articles. Um, they oftentimes use it if if the um, article, like they'll use it on bottles and things like that, so it's not a perfectly flat surface where dusting sometimes becomes a problem, they'll super glue fume it. And the idea of super glue fuming is that the super glue fumes react with sweat and the trace amounts of amino acids, fatty acids, and proteins to form a hard whitish deposit that then can be lifted with powder. Here's an example of what a super glued uh, fumed print looks like. And you can see uh, you put the print in a closed container with two to three drops of super glue and you put it in an incubator or a heat source for about 15 minutes. And the super glue fumes adhere to the sweat and proteins that are left behind on the print and they create um, the ridge patterns. And this was a, a Coke bottle and you can see all the little prints um, that were fumed. And then once you have this, you can either just take a picture of it or you can then dust it and the dust, the black powder, will adhere to the super glue and then you can lift it in the same way that you would lift a um, dusted print. The third method is iodine fuming. Iodine fuming works very well on uh, porous surfaces and sometimes non-porous surfaces, but it works better on porous surfaces. Um, Okay, porous surfaces such as paper, index cards, magazines, cardboard, anything like that, uh, iodine fuming will work very well for. It works, like I said, better for porous surfaces. Um, and the theory is that the sweat and the oils that are left behind from when your fingers touch the surface will absorb the iodine vapors. Okay, so it works really good if you have like notes that are left at crime scenes that people have touched or bills or anything like that. It works very well on paper. So what you do is you place your object, so say that you thought there, there were fingerprints on like an index card, you place it in an enclosed container, okay, and you can see there's a lid on it with two to three iodine crystals, and the iodine crystals are right here, okay, and then you um, wait about anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes, 
an iodine um, sublime, so it goes directly from a solid into a gas. And as it does that, the vapors, the iodine vapors, um, kind of get sucked into the print. The sweat and oils kind of attach to them. And you get a print that looks something like this. It's like a brownish color, yellow brown. The issue with iodine fuming is that once you take the print out of the enclosed container, the iodine fumes will dissipate back out into the air. So you need to make sure you take a photograph quickly of your print that's been developed because it will go away um, over time. Or you can do what's called a starch dip, where you can dip your print into a starch solution and the starch reacts with the iodine and um, saves your print. So you can do it either way. And they'll show you in um, the next video more specifically how to do that. The fourth method is what we call ninhydrin. Ninhydrin works very well on porous surfaces, um, paper, tissue, but right here you want to star this, clothing. Ninhydrin is the best method to use for clothing. Uh, so if you think that there was a fingerprint that was left on a t-shirt or clothes in some way, jeans, anything like that, uh, the ninhydrin reacts with the amino acids that are left behind in your fingerprints and they form a purple compound. So ninhydrin is a chemical that will react with amino acids. So what you do is you soak your surface with an ninhydrin solution. So it'll work on paper, uh, clothing, anything like that, anything that's porous. Um, you'll soak the, the area, okay, right here, uh, with ninhydrin, and then you have to allow it to completely dry, and it takes about 24 hours for your print to develop. So this one takes the most time of any of them, but it works really well on porous materials. So sometimes it'll even take 24 or 48 hours to completely develop. The last method is silver nitrate and the UV light. It also works really well on porous surfaces. It works extremely well on paper and drywall. That's what it's most commonly used for. And the theory behind it is when your fingerprints are exposed to UV light, or sorry, when silver nitrate is exposed to UV light, the silver nitrate reacts with the salt in the sweat from your fingerprints to form a blackish compound. So you spray the area that you think the fingerprint is at with silver nitrate, and then you put a UV light on it. And if there's fingerprints there, the sweat from the fingerprints will react with the silver nitrate and form a black compound. So this is where they're spraying the location where they think the print is at with silver nitrate, then they put it into the UV light, and this is the UV light, okay, in about five to ten minutes, this is what the print will look like. It's like a blackish brown. It'll kind of develop out so that you can see it. So all five of these methods are methods used to take invisible prints at a crime scene that you think are there and make them visible so that you can analyze them.